During my 11-year NBA career, I spent a lot of time on the road. One of the things I enjoyed most was finding unique and truly local places to eat. My goal is to share that knowledge with you in our road edition of Crotty's Cuts. In all my years playing out here in Utah, I love coming to this place 15 miles outside of Salt Lake City. It's a delicious, fantastic Italian restaurant and it's called Tuscany. Located at the base of the picturesque Wasatch Mountain Range, Tuscany offers incredible views and a nationally acclaimed menu. Former teammate and jazz center Mark Eaton was among a group of founders who in 1994 transformed the legacy of a former campsite into one of Salt Lake's finest Italian eateries. Chef Adam Vickers provides a variety of classic dishes that pay tribute to the true tradition of Tuscan diet. Hey, Chef Adam, John Crotty, good to be back good here at Tuscany. My former teammate Mark Eaton had me here several times. It's great to get back again. Tell us a little bit about your menu here at Tuscany. Well, at Tuscany, we're, you know, you're not your traditional Italian, but we do try to hit the, some of those traditional Italian marks with something like a chicken parmesan. That um, looks outstanding right there. You know, our, our pork chop. Low calorie too, right? Very low calorie, very, <laughs> for those what, cold winter months. What about this one? This is our double cup pork chop. Uh, it's been on the menu for quite a long time now, one of our very signature items. Excellent. Um, we do make everything in-house. All our own pastas are made here. So this is something authentic here? To This is your favorite go-to? Yes, it's one of mine. Yes, Okay, sir. tell me what this, this is called. This is a pot, pasta puttanesca. It's a seafood pasta with a spicy tomato sauce with capers and olives. Nice. Definitely you mind if I hit it right here? jump in All there. All right, man, I'm going for it right now. Explosion in my mouth right there. Little peppery, spicy. Maybe got some jucamup sauce on there. Too. Yes, sir. Really good. Thank you. Look, thank you so much for making these for us. We're gonna go out to the table, pick this food back, and get to work on it. Thanks Please for do. having us. We really Enjoy. appreciate it. Enjoy. Thank you. thank you. Utah holds a special place in my heart, as it is the place I caught my first break in the NBA. I spent five of my 11 seasons in Salt Lake playing alongside Hall of Famers John Stockton and Carl Malone on some of the best teams in jazz history. Jay Crowder also spent time in Utah, and the Crowder connection to this franchise has a layer you might not be aware of. As we get set to wrap up the road trip, I asked Jax to swing by for some insight and some Italian ingest. Jax, great to have you here, man. Are you kidding me to break bread out here in Salt Lake City? Uh, a place that is dear to my heart. Uh, it's so great to have you out here and, and be able to drink a little uh, grapes and be able to eat some Italian food. Tell me something about this space and this place for you. Uh, when you tell the story, it feels like this is the, the, the heart and soul of your time <laughs> in the league. And listen, most players are going to probably go an entire, thank you very much, uh, career you. Not being around a single Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, the, the thing is, first of all, when you come in as a young player, you're, you're looking up to someone to try to show you the way and, and to have those type of uh, guys ahead of you. John Stockton, for me, as a point guard, a guy I had to play and practice against every single day, which was incredibly, incredibly humbling. Carl Malone, equally uh, adept at the, at the power forward spot. And then Jerry Sloan as a coach, just an incredibly humble guy who uh, exuded a toughness and a physicality and created a culture uh, very similar to the, to the Heat culture in terms of work ethic and accountability. It really was an amazing place to learn and as a young player I was very blessed. I, I really, I point a lot to my longevity in the league at, had, at having started you know, here in Utah and learning from those guys. How tough was it though? The grit and grind that comes with the Jerry Sloan dynamic. Second day of training camp, Carl knocked me out on a side screen pick and roll action knocked me out. You know, it was a little welcome to the NBA yeah. moment for me, but uh, guarding Stockton and being a little chippy and excited, I, I, turned, I learned how to relax and calm down a little bit after that. But, you know, look, those guys, they did all the right things and they competed at such a high level. They showed up every day and put the work in. It was, it was a great example and I think it made me mentally tougher and, and again made me uh, an even more intense worker than I was. I just bridge this thing now. There might be a little, little time in between these Utah Jazz experiences, but Jay Crowder who showed up with us, uh, he has spent some time here. Uh, your thoughts about how he's fitting in immediately. It's just like he's almost like Jimmy. Like, yeah. 
he should have always been a Miami Heat player. That type of DNA. Well, I got a funny story actually about him. So just to show you how small the basketball world is, his dad, Corey Crowder, and I crossed over here really? in Salt Lake City. We wound up playing on the same summer league team. He played 91-92 uh, for Utah, and I came in and wound up, he left and went to Italy, and I took his spot here in the Utah Jazz in 92-93. Sure. Um, and it's, it's Corey J. Crowder is his name That's after his dad. So, absolutely. you know, Jay has that type of DNA. He's got that, that toughness. He's got that uh, competitive desire, that culture to fit right in with the Miami Heat. And I'm excited to have him after the first two games. The production that he's put out there, along with the intangibles, is apparent. Yeah, there's something about the, these Marquette dudes, right? There's something <laughs> about the debate that happened for a while. Who was the best Marquette player? And Doc Rivers even now. Well, no, he, and he may, it, it is hard of heart. He may think it's still him. But he notes <laughs> that it's that it's twin. He likes to say it's him, though. That's what's always so funny every time we have our presser with him. Exactly. But no, it's definitely Dwayne, right? But it's, look have Jimmy come in and, and, and now Jay to come in, it's it's amazing. They, there's there's something about those guys, their, their hard work ethic and uh, their mental toughness again, it's it's a great fit. I think his three-point shooting and his versatility um, on the defensive end is just what the Heat need right now. He's getting open looks that I don't think he got in the last few years and I can just see the joy in his face. You wanna see some joy in my face? Come on, <laughs> come on. Come on, let's get to it. Always good to get with you, my friend. My man. Jax, while we're here eating this spectacular food, I gotta think about my man, Mark Eaton. He's a part owner here at this restaurant, my former teammate. 7'4", one of the best big shot blockers in the history of the game. I think of the era that I played in with the Hakeem Olajuwans and the Patrick Ewings and uh, the Shaquille O'Neals, the, the big men, the dominant big men who really were the focal point of a lot of the offense because of their positioning to the basket. How about the era now? I mean, yes. what, do you, what do you think? We're gonna have the best athletes come to this game, now more than ever, uh, particularly because parents are, are driving their kids a little bit away from contact sports. And so this era now is about the skill set. And, and particularly being involved, if you're a big fella, handling the ball and being able to launch it from the edges, uh, three more than two all yeah. day long. And I, look, I think the, the influx of foreign-born players too is a big yeah. deal because the skill set, they start at a very young age learning how to shoot versus a lot of American players who I think if they're the bigger players in their class as a younger guy or pushed down into the post, relegated more to a limited skill set, we're seeing everyone want to step outside, handle, learn how to shoot. Now break down this matchup we're gonna have because this is a little bit more toward what you probably feel is a little more classic. While Bam still can handle and orchestrate offense, when he's going against Rudy Gobert, I mean, we're going to get some defense and some rebounds. Yeah, a little more of a banger inside Rudy Gobert. Again, double-double machine. It's a nice matchup uh, seeing Bam on him because of his size and speed. But Bam will have to use the quickness, too, to outrun Rudy as much as possible. It'll, it'll be fun. Uh, Rudy, a little bit of a throwback, but still the quickness and the athleticism there, unlike maybe some of the, you know, the older, more traditional big men. Listen, excellent work out of you. But let's get to the work that you really set up for tonight. What a great night out here at Tuscany Restaurant. I want to thank Chef Vickers, General Manager Sean Boyle, and of course my old teammate, Mark Eaton. If you find yourself in Salt Lake City, you got to come out and check out Tuscany Restaurant or check out their menu at TuscanySLC.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed the cuts, and we'll see you down the road. And in the meantime, guess I'm walking. I wonder how far it is to downtown Salt Lake. <laughs>